Hello, and welcome to today's webcast, Why Jump? An Introduction for Professors and Students. My name is Chuck London, and I will be hosting today's webcast. We would like to answer questions that arise during the broadcast, so please use the chat or Q&A panels to submit your questions at any time. However, we will wait until the end of the presentation to address your questions. Let's meet our presenter. Kevin Pockner is an academic ambassador with JUMP. JUMP is a business unit of SAS specializing in desktop software for dynamic data visualization and, and analysis. Now we invite you to sit back and relax, and we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, Kevin, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, Chuck, for the introduction. Uh -huh. And I think I just made you the presenter, if you want to make sure we can see your screen. Okay. And I do see the agenda. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, Chuck. Well, right, thank welcome, you, Kevin. All right. Well, welcome everybody to today's webinar. Um, why to using Jump in uh, statistics courses? So here's a little agenda of the topics we're going to cover today, and we're not necessarily going to go in exactly that order. In fact, as we go through various data sets and analyses, we're going to be touching um, many of these concepts. Um, a big a uh, feature of JUMP that uh, we're going to emphasize a lot today is JUMP's ability to visualize data. Um, it's got a lot of great tools for doing that, and so I'm going to do a lot of focus on visualization, and, and some of that's going to be just graphing data, and some of that is going to be part of um, analyses we do, maybe even some sophisticated analyses. Um, another big feature of JUMP that I think makes it stand out from other software is as we run analyses and we're looking at output, we actually get to sort of filter the data in, sort of in the moment and watch the results change, the graphs change, all the output um, and numerical uh, values on that output change as we filter the data and sort out the data in different ways. Um, and I want to show that a lot because I think this really makes Jump stand out from other software. And not only does it aid in analysis work, but you'll see that it's really great for teaching concepts. Um, my belief is, is you learn by changing something and watching what does or doesn't change in something else. And so I'm going to show you how great Jump is at doing that. Um, while we're doing that, we're going to do some formal statistical analyses. We're going to build some models, um, including using categorical or continuous predictor variables. And again, a big component of this is to show you how great Jump is at visualizing um, the results. So I'm just going to give a, a little what's going to happen, and then we'll go back and I'll make all these different graphs. So this is an example of uh, a standard graph in Jump where it's a scatter plot, but in addition to it being a, a classic Y by X scatter plot, we're going to bring in other variables. And so you'll notice that the points have different shades of a color and of different sizes. And, those happen to correspond to two other variables that we're going to bring in the analysis, which kind of adds a lot of dimension to um, the graph. We're also going to, um, as I mentioned, this concept of filtering data. And so you see that same graph I just showed on the right, but now on the left are these two tools called, one's called the column switcher and one is called the local data filter. And that's going to allow us to change that graph in real time as we filter and uh, you know, tweak what data is being used for the graph. Um, here's a graph I'm going to show called the bub plot, which is, it looks similar to this concept of Y by X with colors and, um, and sort of size of bubbles. But we're going to bring in a time variable. And so what you'll see is we can watch this graph change as we move across a time dimension. Here is an example in JUMP where we can actually plot latitude and longitude data and have a map overlaid on top of that. This happens to be a, a map of San Francisco. And again, we can bring up this concept of a data filter. And so we can watch this graph change as we um, move across different, different variables. Here's another graph that Jump makes called the heat map, and we're going to sort of graph 
um, different variables on different axes, create different panels, and basically it creates a, a grid, and each cell is another variable that the, the color the, or the shade of that of that cell is going to be uh, plotting the, the count of, a, of another variable. Here is a, a plot called the matrix plot, which is basically just a large collection of scatter plots. Um, so there happens to be nine different variables here. So it's gonna show every possible combination of looking at those variables against each other. There was a 3D scatter plot, and when you see this, we're going to we're going to rotate the graph, change variables, and again, we're just going to watch all that information change from that same view of that graph. We're going to build some some regression models, and so over on the right, you you see that there's a a, a y by x um, with a regression model. Um, we have it paneled by two different categories. It happens to be gender. You'll see this when we get to this data set. And again, I've got the column switcher and local data filter up over on the left, and we're going to start watching those graphs and the numerical output change as we start filtering the data and looking at different subsets of the data. We're going to look at um, some classic um, single predictor variable analyses. The one on the left is ANOVA, so you've got two, two levels of a categorical variable and a continuous out, uh, output. And we're going to see that classic graph and corresponding ANOVA table that goes along with that type of analysis, which you're, you're most likely covering in a, um, if not the first stat class, uh, maybe the second stat class in a, in a two-course sequence. Over on the right is simple linear regression for, you know, one predictor variable. And again, all the classic output. And when I get to that, you'll see how dynamic that is. We're also going to build a multiple regression model where we're going to bring in more than one variable and in addition to all the classic statistical output, I'm going to draw a lot of attention to the, the visualization that comes with it. This is, a, this is a, a tool called the profiler that comes out, and it's basically showing that relationship for each variable. And we can interact with this sliding around where we set different predictive variables, and we can watch the, um, uh, the prediction value for the outcome variable uh, get displayed along with a confidence interval impact for it. Another part of looking at these models is we're going to be able to look at contour plots and surface plots of various combinations. Again, we can interact with this, rotate that, that surface plot around, move the dimensions of the contour plot. And so again, a big part of JUMP, and I think is what separates it from a lot of uh, other statistical packages, is we make sure that there's a lot of visualizations to support a statistical analysis. We think that's really key to not only analyzing data, but for teaching and learning the concepts. Okay, so those are things that we're going to cover. Hopefully we do not run out of, <laughs> out of time. Okay, so I'm going to open up this first data set here. Okay, so just to give a quick um, description of what this data set is, so we have 31 uh, individuals. You can see their name over here. You can also see a little image. Oh, this is a little neat thing in Jump is I can drag in images into this cell. So these could, I just happened to grab little icons of, of these individuals, but these could be the actual photograph of them. So that, that's kind of fun. You'll see later how we, uh, um, um, how we, how we look at that. Okay. And the, Oh, you know what? Actually, let me do something different. I, I, I apologize. I'm going to start with a different data set. So I want to build it up in a, in, a, in a different way. I apologize. Let me let me do that instead. Okay. Promise we'll, we'll get to that data set I was, I was showing, but I want to go in, in a different order here. Okay, so this, this is data set on um, a study that was done measuring the scores uh, for students applying to college across different states, across different years, their, uh, that, that particular state's um, average SAT scores against verbal and math. We got um, other variables like the percent taking the SATs in a particular year, um, and across you can see other things like the expenditure, student-faculty ratio, salary, um, we won't be touching all of these variables, but 
there's a whole collection of variables associated with each of those states. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this SAT verbal and SAT math. Okay. Now, when you do an analysis and jump, you save that analysis um, to this data table. And, and over here on the left is some analyses I saved. So if I just click on it, it launches this again. And so there you see that uh, graph I was showing you in the agenda. Now, to make that graph, we open up a platform in Jump called the Graph Builder. Okay, so I'm going to open up the Graph Builder. And so I'm going to try to make some room here. So over on the, the right, you see the graph we're going to make. And over on the left is the, is the platform we're going to use uh, to make that graph. Okay. So the way the Graph Builder works is you basically have this blank canvas sitting here, and then you start building the graph by dragging variables into different roles. So I'm going to put verbal on the y-axis. So I just grab it over here in the list of variables on the left, and I drop it into that role. Now, since there's only one variable, SAT verbal, well, it's going to start off with a plot that might make sense, which is sort of a dot plot of those values. Um, I could also look at, say, a box plot of that by clicking on the box plot, maybe turning off the points. Okay? Um, because when the only sort of graph that makes sense is to display just one dimensionally, because we just have one dimension in there. So now I'm going to drag, as you see the graph on the right, we're going to put uh, SAT math on the x-axis. So I'm going to grab that variable and I'm going to drop it on the x-axis. Now, as soon as you do that, Jump says, oh, you must want a scatter plot. And there's the plot that's made right away. Okay? So I've got a scatter plot of those two variables. Now, I don't have the graph fully made yet because I'm going to bring in some other variables to, to incorporate population size, which is the size of the bubble. And the shading of the bubble is going to be this variable called percent taking the SAT in 2004. So I come back to the Graph Builder platform, and I'm going to grab these variables. So I'm going to start off with population. Now, when I pick it up, you see how in the Graph Builder all of these areas get highlighted. Well, those are the roles that I can put uh, these uh, variables in. So as I bring this over, it's going to make a particular graph depending on where I place it. And so if I, as you see, I move it up here to groups, well, now it's going to create a separate scatter plot for different levels of the population. But that's, that's not what I want. I want, I want it to be um, uh, a size. So you'll notice over here, one of the roles is size. So if I bring population there and drop it and let it go, now the size of those bubbles are the population size of those different states. Okay, now you might look at that and say, wait, it looks like there's more than 50 uh, states up there, but that's, that's because I've got one for each of those years. So, but we'll, we'll get to sort of uh, isolating that in a moment. Now, the other variable I want to bring in is the shading of the percent taking SAT. So I come over here, I grab this percent taking SAT, and I bring it over. And again, as I move it around to different roles, it's going to consider, oh, well, do you want it paneled like this? Um, do you want it paneled like this? Maybe you want a panel like this. Well, I actually want it to be the color. So I'm going to drop it into the color roll, and then I let go. And there it is. Okay, so this graph that I just um, made is this one that I showed you already made. Okay, so this is, this is really great because you sort of build the graph that makes sense. And then when you have what you want, uh, oh, perfect, this is the one I want. And you can sort of try out different graphs with the same view versus trying to make, oh, let me try this graph, let me try this graph, let me, and you keep on making another graph and then try to compare it. You sort of do it all in the moment. Okay. Now, I mentioned that there's a concept called the data filter and column switcher. And so this was a, a, a view I showed you in the agenda. So we're going to bring up these two tools called the local data filter and a column switcher. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so back to the Graph Builder uh, platform. So I'm going to bring up this column switcher tool. And it's basically asking me, well, which column do you want to switch? And so I'm going to choose to switch this percent taking the SATs in the year 2004, which is the color variable. Okay. 
now it says, okay, well, what do you want to um, use to switch out? And so I'm going to grab a bunch of these variables here that make sense to switch out. And I hit OK. And basically what happens, you'll see on the left, is this column switcher platform pops up where now I get to switch between these. And as I switch between these, look over on your right is I'm changing the color variable. So again, it doesn't require me to make dozens of different graphs. I can see the same graph and move around and explore the data that way. And again, when I have the graph I want, I can save it out. Okay. The other tool I'm going to bring up is this local data filter. Okay. And so now you'll see um, over here on the left, this new platform opens up called the local data filter. And what I can do is I can pick a variable, or in fact, I can pick many variables. I can kind of build this uh, to filter the data in many different dimensions. So, but I'm just going to pick year. And so when I pick year and hit add, okay, a little um, view pops up here listing out all the possible years. Now, we've got a lot of information on here, so hence the graph is small. But when I go to save it out, you know, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be full size. But what I want to emphasize here, and I'm just going to actually slide this over to uh, create some more room here. Oops. Oh, it's probably going to move that at the same time. Let's see. Okay. So here is this local data filter with year. Now, right now, this graph is all the years. But I can choose to say, well, I just want to see that graph for 1992. Or maybe I want to see it for 1994. And notice I can flip through here to see it, or some combination. Maybe I only want to look at 2001 to 2004. And so now the graph changes with just that data. Or maybe 1992 to 1999. And notice how the graph is changing. And again, I got that column switcher. So now I can hit play over here. And I can watch that graph change as I move through the different variables. And again, when I have the one I want, I can be like, oh, that's, that's the graph I want. And then I just hit done. And then I'm going to save out. Um, I can save out that graph and save it to the um, I'm going to collapse some of these things here just to create a little bit more room. And now I've got this, this graph, the one I wanted. But I did it by trying many, many different combinations, not having to make separate graphs, but work from within one platform. I, I think that really is a, is a great, great feature. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, close this up, get out of the way. And here's a graph called the bubble plot. And this is one of the items I showed you in the agenda. And you make that bubble plot. Um, under our graph menu, we have a bubble plot platform. And again, you drag, I'm gonna, just because of, of time, I'm, I'm not gonna build every single graph, but you, you'll get the idea. You start dragging variables into different roles. So SAT verbal on the Y axis, SAT math on the X axis. I'll bring in things like percent taking. See, I got size, coloring, um, the time variable, and then I can bring in like the state and the region and, and all of that. So I just bring it into this platform, hit OK, and it makes this graph. But again, for the preservation of time, um, I'm not going to manually build every graph. I, I might just bring up the result so I can play with it. OK, so again, we get verbal versus math. We have percent taking as the coloring variable, population as the size of the bubble. And right now, we're showing region, not every state. And so I can hit play, and I can now watch that graph change across the year. Again, very dynamic. I think it's an excellent way to teach. And in addition, because I have region and state, watch this. I'm going to click on a region. So right now, I grabbed all the states that are in the south region. And watch this. I'm going to hit the split button, and boom. It now takes that one region and breaks out all the states separately. Okay? And you might notice something interesting. Okay? I'm going to combine that back, and I'm going to do it again. Watch what happens when I split the south. Watch how the states separate. Okay? See how all the states that are dark blue, in other words, a high percentage of people taking the, the SATs, goes lower, and all the states that are lightly colored, in other words, a smaller percentage of taking the SATs, those scores are higher. Okay? Now, how would you do that by building a regression model or statistical model? It's very, very complicated. But just through this dynamic visualization, I can start learning things. And this feature happens across other variables, too. Here's the southwest. See that same pattern. 
the light colored states move up high, the low color, the low, uh, the dark states that have a high percentage of taking the uh, SATs gets lower. Okay, really neat way to uh, to explore the data. Okay, so I'm going to close that up, and I'm also going to close this data set because those are the uh, graphs that I wanted to show you with that particular data set. Okay. All right, now I'm going to bring up a, another data set. And this data set is crime data um, in San Francisco. And so we have a whole bunch of variables here. Um, in fact, all of this data is just from one month from April of 2012. Um, now, I live in San Francisco here, so this worries me that that number is almost 10,000 just in one month. Um, but I've got variables like the time that the, the crime happened, day of the week, um, the category of the crime, um, the district that the crime is in, along with uh, variables that we're going to use like latitude and longitude. Okay. So the first graph that we're going to make is this display of those crimes on, on the, the actual map. And we've got the different regions or the police districts in different colors. So it's just kind of a nice convenient way to look at this uh, data. Now this is built using the graph builder. So I'm gonna pull up that graph builder again, okay? Now I've got latitude and longitude. And as soon as I drag those in here in the middle, well, jump knows, okay, well, those are latitude on the y-axis, longitude on the x-axis, and it drops it right there. Okay, now I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So now I need to get the map of San Francisco on this display. Okay. And so built into Jump is the ability to access different maps. So I'm gonna bring in this street map here. It takes a, a, it's gonna take a minute to render and there it is. Okay, so now it's gonna drop the map of San Francisco um, on top of those latitude and longitude, which is showing where that crime has occurred. Okay. Now I want to bring in different uh, police districts. So I got the variable over on the left and I've got to drop it somewhere. Okay. Now there's a lot of police districts here. There's, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. So as I move over, you just sum that places that really wouldn't make sense. If I a graphic, he put it up here. Well, now it's trying to make a, a graph for each district. That's, that's, a, that's a little um, cumbersome there. Same thing, I could put it here. Um, and again, it's gonna make separate graphs for each district. Same thing, moving here. Well, I want it to be the color. So I'm gonna drop it here. Oh, now I gotta, I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta zoom in because I was moving. I'm gonna throw it up here. And actually, um, I'm just gonna do it again, it'll be easier. And resizing it. Okay. All right. Oh, by the way, and this is sort of what was happening there, I can grab any of these axes and move them around um, and scale it. Okay. If I want to zoom into this in different ways, but I'm going to kind of try to keep it the, the full size. Okay. And so I want to bring that police district, but remember, I want to make it a different color. So I want to drop it right there on top of color. Okay, so now it's just identifying those regions. And I can play with all sorts of things. Like I can make, um, you know, maybe I want to, um, to make the points a, a little bit smaller. So maybe I'll make them, I'll make them tiny, right? So that they're not so big. Um, in fact, maybe the points aren't as interesting, but maybe I want to drop on this little dense, this, oops, sorry, wrong one there. Um, I want to drop on, um, uh, let's see how the ellipse looks. No, I, it, it is this one, but it's just getting a little awkward because it's trying to, you know, take those colors and, and show where that density is. So that's not the, the greatest. One. And that's the thing you do when you make a graph here. You have this entire palette up here of different views that you might want, whether it's a different graph or a different way to display the data. Um, and then you can, um, you can, you can choose those. Okay. Now I want to do, let's see, I think that might be what I just want to sh show with that one. Now, just like I did in the previous graph, 
I can bring up the local data filter if I want and decide that, okay, um, let me pick a variable like say day of the week and I can hit add. So now I've got the days of the week here, okay? And I can say and, and maybe I wanna bring up um, uh, a category and then now you'll see the list of the categories. So right now this graph is displaying all the data, all almost 10,000 um, um, incidents, but now I can start changing that graph by these other variables. So for example, well maybe I just wanna look at weekend. So uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and see where the crimes are. Or maybe I wanna look at the weekdays. Um, maybe I wanna look at specific types of crime, like I wanna look at assaults, and I want to look at them um, just on Fridays. And so you can see over here on the right, the graph is changing. So this allows me, I mean, if you think about it, think of how many combinations of different days, groups of days, different groups of incidents I can look at. And it would be very cumbersome to make an individual graph for those and try to, uh, you know, compare and contrast. Here with Jump, it allows me to do that sort of in real time as I'm um, as I'm looking at uh, as I'm looking at the graph. Okay, so I'm going to close this guy up. Okay. Um, here was another graph I showed in the agenda, which is I want to create these little grids, these little tables where I'm putting over on the left is the police district. At the bottom of each graph is the time of day. So you can see the access shown here from, from, uh, from, from midnight uh, to the following uh, midnight. And I've got day of the week as a separate panel for each, okay? So I'm gonna build, build that graph here. Again, I'm gonna bring up the graph builder tool, okay? So I want to put police district on the y-axis, okay? Now again, you just dragged in one variable, so it's gonna say, okay, well, how about a default graph is a bar chart of each of those police districts where the, the length of the bar is the number of incidences, right? So that's gonna start off with that because I just, I just have one variable in there. But what I wanna do is I wanna do this heat map, okay? So I selected this heat map. Now on the x-axis, I wanna bring in time. So I'm gonna drag time down here and drop it there. Okay, so now we have a heat map of district by time and the color, the density of that color is the number of those uh, incidences in that particular police district and at that particular time, okay? So it's just counting across all the different crimes. Um, now I can bring in something like day of week and now I wanna panel it in some way. So I can panel it this way, well, that's a little crowded. Maybe paneling it this way, well, that's a little crowded too. Maybe the wrap is the best. Ah, there we go. See, so now I can, I can let me make this a little bit bigger. So now I've got a separate heat map, district by time of day for each day of the week. Okay? And remember, I have that data filter, so I can bring a data filter up um, and start seeing how these heat maps change as I say, for example, look at different crime types. You know, maybe I can say, well, let me just select all the violent crimes or like, let me select all sort of the, the burglary crimes and so on. And I can, um, I can change this, this view. And again, when I'm done, and this is the graph I want, I just hit done and now here it is. And, and then I can choose to save it to the data table and then it's part of my data table. And so when I open up, um, the, the data table again, I can just run that. So over here on the left are those of those graphs I made and whatever I want to see them again, I just run it and just can close it out. And so here are those, here are those different uh, maps and graphs we were looking at. Okay, All right, I'm gonna close this data set out and I'm gonna bring in another one here.
So this data set here is, hold on here, I'm just gonna, gonna move between these two. So this data set here is information about 20 different cities. So you can see those 20 cities listed here. I've got the name of those cities. And here is what I was showing you earlier. I can drag in an image as an actual data point. So I'm just gonna make that a little larger so you can see it. So I actually dragged in a picture of each of those cities um, because it might be nice. And you'll see when you make a graph, I can, I can pull that image up if I want. Now, I don't want to get into too much details of this data, but basically this is a bunch of marketing data for these 20 different cities um, that deal with um, you know, uh, different things like the brand sentiment, how much market share of different uh, uh, customer segments that this company has in these different regions and you know, growth rate, number of branches. This happens to be for a financial uh, services firm. But, but again, I don't want to get too much into the meaning this webinar is really all about, you know, showing the tools and um, showing analyses being done. Okay, so one of the graphs I'm going to make, and I showed you in the agenda, is this, um, it's called a matrix plot, which is basically a large collection of scatter plots. In this case, every possible um, combination of those variables. Okay. And then I've got some other things that are, are being shown here, and I, depending on time, I may choose to grab those or not. Okay, so this is pretty easy to run. Under the Analyze menu, we have a platform called Multivariate Methods, and I'm going to pull that dialog box up. And I can grab all the variables I want to use here, and there are nine different variables, and I drag them into this Y role. And as soon as I hit OK, it's going to say, well, you want probably a whole collection of correlations. So here's, here's the correlation table. And something nice jump does is it, it looks at all those values and it shades them um, uh, different colors to pace, uh, based upon the, the strength of that correlation. And so you can see the positive ones are in blue, the negative ones are in red, and as they get larger, they get darker um, in color. So it's just a nice way to quickly see um, the correlations and identify the large correlations. Now here's a that collection of scatter plots, and uh, I can resize this if I want. I'm going to just make this a, a little bit bigger so we can see. Um, and again, I can move these around. I can I can play with the scaling if I want. Okay. Now once you run an analysis and jump, and and I didn't grab any of these options yet, but you'll see that there are all these little red triangles. We call these the hot spots. And this is where you bring up options to either you know, alter that graph, run another type of analyses, um, and I can select some of them here. So some of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to take off this density ellipse, which is, this is showing the classic multivariate normal density ellipse. And instead, I'm going to use a non-parametric density ellipse. Okay, and so now it's identifying those regions and obviously the darker is where there's more, more density of the data. Okay, now, oh, you might also notice that the, their, the points have colors and that's because I set them up over here to have different colors. Um, I had done a cluster analysis on this data, so it's putting them in, into different colors and, and groups. Now, remember I mentioned that there's an image as a data value. Well, I have that attached to this, so if I float a cursor over a data point, it's going to pop up the information about that I've asked it to label. Um, so in this case, the name of the city is Portland. Show me the image of Portland. Okay, beautiful, we got Mount Hood sitting right there. And it's then show me also the values of that data point on that particular graph. So this particular graph is plotting these two variables. And so it's going to show me what those two values are when I, when I grab them. Okay. And again, I can bring up that data filter and start, you know, looking at only specific cities instead of looking at the entire set of 20 cities. Um, if I wanted to do, I could, I could do that. Okay. 
Some other things that um, I can do is right from here, I can ask it, well, put, put on a trend line on each of those. And so there's the there's a trend line, actually a confidence interval around around that line if I wanted to view that. And again, you can shut some of these things off. So maybe I want to get the non-parametric density um, um, out, out of the way. Maybe, um, and again, I can turn off the fit line if I want. Okay. And again, you'll see here, there's a whole list of things that, that I can do. Um, here's a graph that can sometimes be nice. It's a little parallel um, coordinate plot. And so you can see here on the bottom, actually, let me pull this, uh, pull this up so it can be higher on, on your screen as you're looking. You can see I do this a lot where you can resize graphs. So you have a graph, you can you can make it a little bit bigger here. Maybe I want to drag it this way, you know, well, I want it that big. Um, and again, pull this around. And then you can just save out um, the graph you want based upon the size as you play around with it. Okay, so what this particular graph does is it shows the nine variables on the bottom. And then what's being plotted on the y-axis is the values of, oh, sorry, the, the, the values for those based upon the different cities. So if I click on a city there, so that happens to be Miami, okay, that city is Portland, okay, that city is Miami again. So I can kind of click, um, or I can, well, it would take me moving the two aside. I won't actually do that. Okay. And again, as you run a platform, you'll see there's options. So there's all the data. Now I'm going to add the mean to the graph. So that gray line that gets that gets added right there, that's now the overall mean for across those 20 cities for those nine different um, different variables. So again, whenever you run an analysis and jump, click these red triangles, and that's where you're going to see the next level of options. And this is really nice about Jump because what it's trying to do is it's trying to take you through an analysis. So instead of seeing all the options at the beginning, you, you do a, an analysis or create a graph or create some output, and then Jump will display, well, these are probably the next things you want to do. And so under a particular red triangle, we call them hotspots, are things you want to do with, say, in this case, that scatter plot matrix. And here is what I might choose to do. Under the coordinate plot, well, the only option here is to show the mean, so you can turn it um, on and off. Um, under the multivariate platform is all the things you might want to do um, right from the, the main multivariate analysis. Huh? I'm going to close that graph. And the other one I want to make is I'm like, you know what might be neat is looking at this data multidimensionally. So I'm going to bring up this 3D scatter plot. And again, I'm going to throw in all nine of these variables into that role. So they're all sitting there. And I'm going to hit OK. And what Jump is going to do, I'm actually going to make the size of these points a little bit bigger so that we can all see them a little bit more easily. OK. And so what Jump has done here is it's made a 3D scatter plot of those first three variables. And I can ground this and rotate this around, right? So this is really fun to sort of explore, look for unusual observations in a multi-dimensional sense, right? And kind of um, you know, see, see what, those, uh, what, those, what those are and how they stand out. But if you notice down the bottom, I've got these little drop downs. So I can start switching which variable I want to show on these different axes. So I might say, I'm going to put this fourth variable in there. And now that fourth variable is, is shown. Or maybe I want to show this variable, or maybe I want to change this one. And so I can start doing this and rotating around. Now, there's a lot of possible combinations of plotting nine variables in three dimensions. So an easy way to do it is I can actually just hit this little forward button over here on the right, and it's just going to move through all those combinations. So if you look up on the graph, you'll see I'm starting to change different different axes with different variables, right? And so I could just quickly click through this and see, you know, one that I want. Um, so again, it's much better than having to make one 3D scatter plot, then another 3D scatter plot, and then another 3D scatter plot, and then try to look at them all and compare and con contrast. It's so much more interesting and informative to sort of do it interactively like this. Okay. And again, under 3D scatter plot is going to be some options 
that I might um, that I might want to add to this. So, for example, let me put a um, I'm going to put a little three-dimensional ellipsoid shown on that graph, if that's sort of uh, what I want to display. And so I could kind of turn that on. There's also non-parametric um, that I can do. All right, so I'm going to close that guy out, and I'm going to close this data set. So let's open up the last data set here. And so this is that fitness data. So this data set, I have got 31 individuals. There's their name, there's their picture. And the key variable, the outcome variable is gonna be this oxygen uptake. And then I've got a bunch of possible explanatory variables like their gender, their age, their weight, the run time, run pulse, rest pulse, max pulse. And so this whole analysis is gonna be about how do these variables, how do these seven characteristics of these people possibly explain oxygen uptake. Okay. And so I'm just going to show you one of the graphs that we're going to make here. And so this is a graph where I'm going to put oxygen uptake on the Y axis. I'm going to put variables on the X axis. I'm actually going to move through um, the different the different predictive variables. I'm going to panel this graph. So gender We've got females and males is going to be shown as two separate panels. I've got the equation R squared, the root mean square error put right on that graph. I'm going to bring up a local data filter so I can start changing that graph. And I'm going to bring up the column switcher here. So I've already set this up. So again, for the preservation of time, I'm going to start right from this. But remember, this is all done from the graph builder. I've shown you that where you start dragging variables into the Y role, like oxygen uptake, a variable into the X role, like um, in this case, runtime. I'm gonna bring the gender into this panel role. And then I've added over here, I can add information to show in this graph, like the, the, the fitted equation, R squared, root mean square error. I can add that information. I mean, if you're teaching the F test, for example, I can add that right there. So you've got the F test, degrees of freedom, the p-value corresponding. Okay. And I brought up the, the column switcher. So this is what's going to allow me to change what's on the x-axis. So that's age, weight, run time, run pulse, rest pulse, max pulse. So again, instead of having to create all these different graphs, I can do it right from this one platform and move through. And as I do this, you can kind of see which, which some of the variables that might be most important. So there's run time. That seems to be a pretty strong uh, correlation. Look, so you can see, look at the correlation values. As I move through, that's the one that has the highest correlation up at the top left of each of those graphs. Okay. So again, for teaching, this is why Jump is so excellent for teaching is as you're trying to teach a concept like which variable is most important, you don't have to create a separate piece of output for each variable and look at it. You can do it all from this one view. And you can say, oh, look, the p-value is... Um, is, again, I can add that F test here. So the p-value is the smallest, the correlation is the largest, root mean square um, is small for that one. I can see how the equation is changing. And then from that, I can also bring up this local data filter. In this case, I brought up the variable age, but I can bring up any one of them if I want. And now what I can do is say, well, I want to see how this output changes as I look at different age categories. So now age is a continuous variable, so I can come in here and either type the values I want to um, subset the data by, or I can drag these sliders. So let's say, for example, well, I want to look at all the people who are over 45 years old. I can drag this to 45. And notice how all of the output, the graph, the equation, the R squared, the p-value, everything changed as I filtered the data. Okay? Or maybe I want to look at uh, the younger people, so everybody below the age of 50. And I can just drag. So as I drag this around, everything is changing in real time as I'm doing that. Again, aside from it being an excellent way to explore data, it's an excellent way to teach, right? Because that's kind of what you want to do, show people. How do things change 
as I change something else. Again, changing different variables, changing different displays, and filtering the data and watching all of the output change. Okay. Really excellent uh, platform. I love that column switcher and data filter. Okay, I'm going to close this one. Um, now what I'm going to do is get to a little bit more inferential statistics. As opposed to just doing it from a graph, I'm going to run some of Jump's platforms for building some models. And so the first one I'm going to do is this fit Y by X. Okay. So brings up this dialog box. Now oxygen uptake is the outcome, so I drag it into the Y variable. And all of these other variables are the predictors. Okay. Now I'm going to just going to do bring in one variable first. I want to show you something. When I drag in gender, which is a categorical variable, right? Two genders, male, female. Well, Jump is going to know that, oh, if you do that, you must want a one-way ANOVA. So notice it says the word one-way here. And it's going to make a one-way ANOVA because, well, that's the analysis you would do. I'm going to drag this out. If I bring in a, a continuous predictor variable like age, and as I, whoops, as I drag age into the X role, notice it says, oh, you must want a bivariate, a simple linear regression. So it does that. Now, I'm just going to put them all in there. It's not going to do a multiple regression model. We're going to do that in a moment. It's going to do one fit Y by X for each possible um, X variable that I put in here. So when I hit OK, you're going to get this display that starts off with a graph. So here's the first one, the categorical variable. So it says, oh, you must want this dot plot with the two categories, oxygen uptake on the Y axis. And all of these other ones are scatter plots because that's how you would look at that kind of data. Now, under each graph is the little red triangle, which is going to be the options that correspond to that analysis. So if I have a continuous Y and a categorical X, all the options that are going to be shown here are things that you would do with that kind of data. Like maybe I want to display the means and standard deviations with some confidence intervals, and it will display that. And again, you could, you could shut them off, or you can just kind of collapse them if you want them out of the way. I'm just going to shut those off. If I want to see the full ANOVA output, the analysis of the variance output, well, I can choose to do that. And it's going to augment that display over here on the left with all of the classic output you would see when running a one-way analysis of variance. Now, there's only two categories, so I also got the t-test put here. And again, I can collapse any output if I don't want to show it. Maybe I just want to focus for a classroom just on this one table, and um, I can do that. Now, if I pull down the red triangle for a continuous X, well, they're going to be different options because it's going to be a different analysis. That's where you're going to do simple linear regression. So I can say, well, fit that line. Okay, I just split over here to the on the screen. So here is now the regression line, and underneath is all of the classic output you would see in a simple linear regression. And again, there's sort of options under here that I want to see, like if I want to save the predicted values or save the residuals. Um, maybe I want to do the classic residual plot. I can, I can add that. And so um, augmented to this graph is the classic residual plots you do, um, residuals by predicted, histogram, uh, residual by order. Oh, that's kind of interesting how they're all going down there. Normal probability plot. You know, those, those all pop up because I've asked for them. And again, I can, I can shut, those, um, shut those off if I want, and now they're gone. Okay. So again, this is a way to look at all of these as individual, one variable at a time analyses on oxygen uptake. And again, we're already kind of getting a sense of ones that might be important, like gender looks important. Um, uh, let's say runtime looks important. That was the, the thing we saw when we did the graph builder. Okay. So now I'm going to close this, and we're going to finish this off by building a multiple regression model. So I'm going to actually ask it to try all seven of these variables. Okay. And so that's a different platform. That's this platform called Fit Model. Okay. This is a very general platform. This does a whole bunch of things, not just what we're going to do. So Oxygen uptake is my Y variable. And I'm going to put in all of these variables. And I want to test if not only are they significant as a main effect, 
I actually want to test all the possible interactions and all the possible quadratics that could be in here, right? So that's a whole bunch of combinations. So I select all the variables and I'm going to say, do a response surface, which is going to fit. Now it lists all the variables here. So you'll see all the interactions are there. There's a lot of them, There's a whole bunch of interactions. I've got square terms that are in here, right? So you can see age by age, you know, then gender by age interaction, gender by weight interaction and so on. And now if I hit run, it's going to fit all of those variables in the model, which is a lot. And I'm sure some of them are not going to be important for, in fact, most of them are not going to be important. So what I'm going to choose to do is run stepwise. Okay. Now you see here, there's options. There's all sorts of other modeling uh, techniques that, that you can do here, but we're just going to do this stepwise routine. And I hit run. And basically this platform opens up where it's going to say, okay, here are all your possible variables we can put in there, all the square terms, all the interaction terms, all the main effects. And I can actually start manually putting them in. And as I put them in, notice how things are changing, right? The R squared is changing, the sums of squares, all that information is changing. Okay, so I can kind of manually put terms in and out and see what impact there is. But instead, I'm gonna run the stepwise routine I'm going to base it on p-values. And I can do this one at a time and watch each variable come in, but I'm just going to hit the go button and let it use this criteria of when to bring a term in and when to bring a term out. So I'm just going to hit go, whoop, jump runs right through. It comes back and says, okay, these are all the variables I want to bring in. So I've got some main effects. I've got some interactions. Um, sometimes it's going to ha it has to bring in a main effect, even if it's not significant, if it's involved in interactions of the concept you know. And so this is the model I want to build. I just hit run model. And now I've got the output. Oh, just close that. Now I've got the output of a multiple. Hold on, I slid it over to my other screen there. Sorry about that. Now I've got all the output for a multiple linear regression. Okay? So it's going to be a lot more output, of course, because I've got a, a bunch of different variables in the model. And again, I can start pulling down these red triangles to do things like let me look, let me do sequential testing, um, let me you know do uh, plots of the residuals, row diagnostics. Maybe I want to save all that information into the data table to do other analyses. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up one that I've already did, and the reason why is I chose to turn on. Actually, I'm going to close all this stuff just to create a little bit more room for us. I chose to turn on two really great, or actually three really great um, graphical features in, in Jump. So I can look, for example, at um, the equation if I want. Okay, so I got my equation here, my parameter estimates, but I think another way to look at it that's a little bit more interesting and I think a little bit more useful for students is I've got displayed this thing called the prediction profiler, which is showing me those effects based on the model I just built for each of those variables that are in the model. And the interactions are in there too. So as I start moving things around, like a variable that's in an interaction, I can see it, the variables that are changing and the variables that are not. So this is a great way to explain to students what an interaction is. And as I pick different settings, and again, I could either type in values or move this slide around, I'm watching the prediction change as a function of where I'm setting all these X values. Really great way to look at, look at the data. Okay? Showing students that, yeah, you build an equation, but that's really a geometrical thing you're fitting to the data. Okay. Now, a few other things that I turned on, which again, all these things come from under these red triangles where you can select things. I selected to show a contour plot so here I've got this contour plot of two variables, max pulse versus weight. There's a little um, surface plot over here. I also got one down here that's a little bit more information. So I'm going to focus on this one down here. And there's all sorts of options where I can change like where I'm viewing, you know, the lower and upper limit. Where do I draw these contour lines? Um, but in this case, I'm, you know, just leave it of, of what I made so you can see. But this one down here, so I'm going to close the surface plot up to create a little bit more room, I'm going to, uh, is now I've got this 3D 
surface plot with the data points that I can rotate around. Again, I can change to different variables here. And again, emphasizing so which values are involved in interactions, that it really makes that easy to see. Okay, now gender is categorical variable, hence that's why what that does is it's kind of doing a little shift, um, right? A shift of the equation for a continuous curve. Oh, this is interesting right here. Look at this, there's the interaction between gender and weight. So one of these lines, and you can see this up here in the profile. So when I go from, when I'm in female, the weight has this negative relationship shown to oxygen uptake. But if I move over to male, you see that that equation changes a little bit based on the model I'm fitting. And you can see that right there in the surface plot. Now, something you always have to do when you're building models, and I always like to make sure I emphasize this to students, you always want to look where the data is, right? And so you can see like, where does that data lie across the dimensions? And you can kind of see that it's not spread out. The design space is a little bit small. So obviously that idea of do you extrapolate beyond that region or not, it's very, very dangerous um, to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna just close this up, close this as well. And let me just bring up, just as we're answering questions, Sorry, I closed it. I'm just going to bring up this agenda again, um, just to emphasize these topics that we covered here. Okay, so again, this whole thing, this theme is about when you're teaching statistics, whether it's basic or advanced, you really want to be inside of an interactive environment with a really powerful graphical platform that you can really tweak and play with variables and data and to I like to think of it as you're exploring the data. You know, it's kind of a new way to think of, of looking at analyses, not just running one, uh, like a t-test and looking at the p-value, but you want to look at highly dimensional data and graph it in a variety of complex ways so you can kind of see the data and all the nuances um, of that data. So I did get to touch on, on every one of these. There's, of course, so much more to learn. And in fact, I'm going to just do this because this will be a, a nice way to end this here. If you go to jump.com, there's a little tab here called Learn Jump. There's a whole collection of learning aids for you. So, for example, you can go to a collection of webinars and you can look at uh, by different topics, by different application areas. And these are all webinars. In fact, like the one we're doing right now today, they get recorded and posted up here. Um, there's a community that allows you to search for answers. You can post questions. You can look at discussions. So if, you, if you're trying to do something in Jump, you can post this question in the community um, or search for it to see if anybody else has asked it or discussed it. Um, and in fact, actually, I'm going to go to, since most of you are academics, I'm actually going to go to the, uh, the part of the website we have focused on um, academic use of Jump. And so same thing, we've got a whole collection of webinars that we have saved. Okay, so again, you can look at it by topic or by theme. And these are good to give to your students too, so you don't have to be forced to answer all their questions about JUMP. You can point them to something like, hey, go watch this video on how to run a simple linear regression. So when you're in class, you can focus more on the concepts and how you interpret the results. And you can give the students, the, point them to these videos. Um, we have collections of um, learning resources for specific topics. So you can look up, a, um, you know, maybe you're doing some basic inference. You can grab that topic. There'll be little short little videos on them. Uh, these are great to give to students. There's these things called one page guides. And so they're just in written form, the instructions of how you run that analysis. Doesn't get too much into output and all the options, but it's a really quick way to like, hey, in this case, I need to run a hypothesis test or a confidence interval for proportions. You can just point your students to this or provide them this, and um, they can uh, go through those steps. Or again, here's a, here's a video to do that. Um, we also have, oh, let me click back one more. We've got course materials. So if you want examples of um, uh, presentation materials, you want case studies, 
You can go in here and re request different information on different types of topics. Um, again, these are great to use for lecture material or stuff to hand out to students. We even have these case studies. So these are great assignments you can give students for projects or homework. Um, and again, these are different kind of um, course types, maybe different analysis types, and you can pick one of these case studies and they're great to give um, to students for assignments. So we really pride ourselves on the resources that we, um, we make available um, to students. Okay, so I see we're out of time um, and not, I apologize, there's just so much to show you I wanted to get to. So I want to give a few minutes to answer